Hey everyone, so uh, this screencast is dedicated to everybody's favorite part of uh, photosynthesis to Calvin cycle. Uh, it's actually it's actually a pretty simplified process, so don't get caught up in um, all the uh, molecules that we'll, we'll talk about. You don't have to memorize the structures, you don't have to know the names of half of them. Uh, so I'm really going to emphasize the process uh, that occurs in, in the Calvin cycle, so don't worry about it. Um, I will tell you the ones that I need you to know by name, uh, and it's there are very few of them. Um, let's see. So basically, for the Calvin cycle, what we're going to be talking about uh, is taking in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere using components that are made from the light reactions. Remember, you get your NAD, pH, and your ATP from the light reactions. And using these components, eventually, uh, what we're going to make is G3P, essentially. But eventually, we're going to convert that G3P into sugar, um, various sugars, actually. Um, the other thing I want you to know is that uh, the process of the Calvin cycle for photosynthesis um, uses up the uh, energetic molecules here. So it uses these. And so also what you're left with after the Calvin cycle is the, redu is the low energy NADP+. Plus. Uh, and uh, ADP. All right, so those two um, compounds basically will have to go back into the, the Calvin cycle to, uh, or into the light reactions, excuse me, to be re-energized. So keep that in mind. Um, basically, it's, cal uh, it's carbon dioxide to G3P, but there's this relationship between high energy um, NADPH and ATP and low energy NADP plus and ADP, so certainly understand that. All right, this is the uh, the really simplified, basic uh, version of the Calvin cycle. All right, so we just talked about what the inputs um, are. You know, these are the reactants for this chemical reaction. Goes into the Calvin cycle. It's a cycle because it basically uh, regenerates itself. We'll talk about that in a minute. And what you're going to get out of this is uh, a molecule called G3P, which eventually goes on to become the sugars that are important for the plant. Okay, that's the basic idea of it. You should certainly know that at that level. I would like you to know it at a, at a much higher level. I'd like you to know it at this level. Um, as far as these numbers go, it's it's interesting to know that this happens in waves of three. Um, the only real reason that it's important to know that is because you get essentially one-sixth of the output for the plant. We'll get to that in a minute. So disregard numbers. You don't have to um, know those numbers for the test, uh, but knowing those numbers will give you a better understanding of the process overall and it'll help you to understand some of the t transitions like from three to six and so on and so forth. So don't don't worry about the numbers too, too much. So this is from um, Campbell 8. So this is from a, a, a bigger textbook basically. So uh, we use the baby Campbell. This is from Campbell 8, the, the big guy. The, the description here is a little better than uh, concepts and connections, so I put this in here for, for your benefit. Basically, the carbon dioxide is going to enter into the Calvin cycle, and essentially what is done is that the carbon from uh, carbon dioxide is going to be ripped off of carbon dioxide and added uh, to this molecule right here. So don't worry about what this is. Um, for right now, it's a six carbon molecule, uh, which is short-lived. It basically breaks down into a three carbon, um, and because you know, from six to three, you get twice as much. So this is the carbon fixation step. This is the part where we take the carbon from uh, carbon dioxide and add it to the cycle, basically to these molecules. Uh, over this process, you're going to see the use of ATP. This is the ATP that we brought in from the light reaction. So this is why photosynthesis requires the production of ATP in the light reactions, because in the Calvin cycle, it's going to be uh, important to change the nature of um, each molecule at each step. Right? So we talked about how uh, adding a phosphate group from ATP changes the structure of a molecule, making it more unstable, making it more potentially energetic, making it more likely to participate in chemical reactions. So certainly understand that that concept. So you see here this molecule comes in with one phosphate and after the after the use of ATP you get two. So you have the first one here and the second one here. This is a, a huge concept for for uh, 
the Calvin cycle basically. These are the NADPHs. So these are full electron carriers, meaning that they're carrying a hydrogen and two electrons, right? So uh, we, we created NADPH during the light reactions again. We're going to use it in the Calvin cycle, meaning those two electrons are going to be important in this process. And what they do basically is NADPH becomes oxidized, meaning it loses its electrons, and basically it's going to reduce this molecule right here. Again, you don't need to know the name of this one. Just know that those NADPHs that we brought in from light reactions are going to be used to reduce these molecules. Again, the addition of electrons makes this molecule more energetic, more potentially energetic, thus more likely to participate in the chemical reaction. Okay. Uh, after this happens, you're basically going to get a transition from uh, this molecule here to probably the most important molecule of the Calvin cycle, and this is G3P. Okay. Again, I just want to kind of associate this with the reduction step right here. So we're left with G3P. After this molecule is phosphorylated, giving you this one. After this one is reduced, giving you this one, we're left with G3P. This is the most important one. Uh, this is the precursor for sugar that the plant's going to use. Okay, so it's going to go on to um, be used to make sugar. And as you all know, sugar is, is um, you know, it's the energetic molecule of, of the plant. It's going to be used for energy. It can be used to, uh, it can be used structurally to, to make cellulose in the, in the cell wall. And it can be used, uh, you know, if, you're, if the plant has lots of it, it can be stored as starch which is a polysaccharide, it's an energy-rich molecule. All right, but the, the other big concept here is that the rest of this, the five-sixths of, of what we're making here, is going to continue on in the cycle, right? So it's, it regenerates itself, basically, this G3P. Uh, it's gonna go a series of steps, so we don't show those steps because it's not important, but it's a series of steps, one of which involves phosphorylation by ATP, so you're gonna use that energy-rich compound again to in some way change the nature of this molecule. Ultimately, you're going to be left with something called uh, RUBIP or RUBIP, if you remember from class. Um, RUBIP. So this is the uh, the molecule that's left over in the cycle, and it's the molecule that's going to be there to receive carbon dioxide, right? So you get one, two, three, four, five carbons here. It's the addition of this this carbon from carbon dioxide that makes this short-lived intermediate that begins the process. Okay, so RUBIP is kind of like the terminal product that keeps this, this process going along. It's very important for the plant to do this. Obviously, um, to keep this cycle going, it needs to keep, um, keep regenerating uh, RUBIP. Okay? And it uses most of the G3P that's made to do that. That's how important it is. Uh, the enzyme that uh, catalyzes the addition of carbon from carbon dioxide to RUBIP uh, is Rubisco. It's, it's a neat... Uh, enzyme, it's very abundant and it's essential for this process. So definitely keep in mind that that uh, enzyme as well. Okay, this is a summary of the process. So, you know, in a lot of ways, this is your test. Um, um, this is this summarizes everything that we've talked about. It, ta it talks about the location of these processes, right? Where are these things occurring? It talks about the reactants or the inputs. It talks about the the outputs. It talks about the relationship between making energetic compounds, having them used up, and then having to recycle them back in. It talks about the role of light in here, right? So you should know the details of all the photosystems that are in here. And this actually summarizes photosystem two, then the electron transport chain, then photosystem one. So lots of information here. I'd like for you to really know this this figure right here because it's gonna this figure will really pay off when it comes to the test. Okay, uh, moving right along. This is a nice little summary for you. So if you can understand most of these things right here, um, you're in really good shape. Okay, so if you can understand the relationship between photosynthesis and cell respiration. Uh, you're going to really do well in this test. You'll really do well in the AP bio test because remember, none of this information is in isolation, right? So it's all going to be brought to you at the same time for the AP bio test and it's all connected, right? For a plant, essentially what you're talking about is photosynthesis followed by cellular respiration. Hope you're, I certainly hope you're making that connection, right? So this was the uh, 
making of the food for a plant, and this is the extraction of the energy from that food. Right? For for us, we basically feed right into cell respiration with the food that we eat. Um, right? Because we don't have we don't have the ability to make our own food. We're not photosynthetic. Okay, so really spend a few minutes looking at this uh, summary also. Um, and if you understand this, you'll be really successful. And, and these are really good questions. Um, puts kind of things, every, everything into perspective. They're not just good questions because I made them. I mean, that's that's one of the reasons why they're good. Um, but it, it, really, uh, it really summarizes the process, okay? So certainly know this stuff. Other than that, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about carbon and its role in the environment. But essentially, your test is on the light reactions and the dark reactions. So if you can master that and you can put it into perspective, you should do really well for this test. Okay, so uh, see you in class for the lab. Take care. Adios.